Okay, everybody, how you doing today? Uh, I got a big video here today. This is going to be a long one, but hopefully not too long. But I'm going to completely restore this entire Zippo on camera because everybody asked for this. And uh, so I'm going to put it out there. <clears throat> I've been putting it off for a long time and, I'm, you know, just complacent, got things to do, busy life, you know what I mean? So I have the time today. I'm going to do it today with the Zippo. I'm going to switch over to, uh, most of you know, I use my high polish brass armor most of the time. But I also like using a Canadian Zippo. And this Canadian Zippo is a Niagara Falls, Ontario one. It's got a Niagara Falls insert. But you can see the insert is, if it'll focus. No, it will not. It's rusty here anyways. So I'm going to polish it up, clean it up. I'm going to change a wick, change a cotton. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to clean up the inside, polish to everything. I'm going to do it all in here. Uh, the hinge ha it has an overbite too, see? It gets it's stuck. But I'm going to fix the hinge too. And uh, the reason why I'm going to start using this one too is because it's black matte. And it, the black matte's already ruined the finish on it. And uh, there was an emblem there. You could still see the remnants of a square. There was a brass emblem there, and someone would have had their initials named, their initials engraved on it. Someone popped it off with a screwdriver. It looks like like I'm just I'm just going with this with the CSI shows, right? But uh, that might not be the case. So, but I don't know. Someone owned the zip. I don't know. I just got it, and I have no idea what happened to it. But there's also big scratch on the back too it's not a dent though it's just a big scratch so i'm assuming that's why it has the overbite because it was dropped it was dropped like that boom causing the overbite so that's probably what happened to it and like i said someone didn't like the initials who were on it scraped it off so i'm eventually going to take all this off and i'm going to gold plate this whole zippo have a niagara falls ontario fully gold plated zippo i think that would be cool and that will be another video another day. But for now, I'm going to use it because I don't care if it gets scratched because this is all coming off. So I'm going to use it up and uh, see, you know, just have some fun with it before I gold plate it. But so anyways, before we get into any of that, uh, please like, share, subscribe, whatever you want to do to help the channel. It really, it really be helpful. Help me out. The channel's in its growing stage right now. And, uh, you know, I want to get this a little bigger. You know, I'm not... Uh, going crazy or anything but you know a few more thousand subs wouldn't wouldn't uh, hurt <laughs> so uh, we'll get started here so the first thing we're going to want to do is take out the insert uh, the insert is well used my camera will probably never focus on that I don't know why it doesn't focus I used to be able to put it straight up and it would focus And it will not focus but it will down there but anyway so you can see it says zippo it in fact does say niagara falls cross there you could just see it and it's a bx is the date and the insert the case sorry is a dx it says on the bottom but it's hard to see also because the black mat and also because my camera refuses to focus now i don't know I don't know why it doesn't, but anyways, let's get into the work. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is take out the pin. Oh, it's already loose. It's just hand tightened. All right, we'll keep this. We'll throw out the felt. Oh, yeah, you can see already rust in there. This cotton has been so used, right? So, you want to get it all out of there. And look how they did it back then, too. Funny. Long, long strips. You'll see they don't do it like that anymore. They don't use long strips. Or however they were doing it. But this is also packed in Niagara Falls, too. Maybe their symbol line is a little different. Oh, and you can see, too. Look at the wick. Well used. Very well used. You see there's barely any wick left in there. So... There we go. Huh, that's how much work was left. Not much. Okay, so we can just discard all this. I'm not keeping this. I don't want it for nothing. It's useless to me. The old felt, useless as well. Don't need it. So I'll throw that in the garbage. Okay. 
And then there's one little piece in here. But I think I need a smaller screwdriver to get it out. I might be able to get it out. And so you want to put unnecessary pressure on that pipe, eh? Because it will. It will. You will move that little pipe in there. Okay, so I think there's one little more piece in there. Sorry, I'm just pushing it up against the thing, trying to, trying to get it out. That's my whole technique. But let me just get it off camera here. So I can see what I'm doing. It's hard to see. Okay. Well, it could stay in there. Not a big deal. So now we take the insert we want to use all the things from. And this is a brass pipe insert. And I don't know, it's just, I don't know, it's nothing special. Why do I got to want to go to use it? I was using it in my armor. Now I'm going to be using it in here. I don't know. I got it for free. It looks like crap. It works like crap. I hate the pipe insert. I was just using it because I didn't have a, bra a new brass insert to put in my armor. But since I'm not going to be using it. I'm not gonna and I'm probably gonna switch to my replica after this I always like to switch so I'll be using this as all Frankenstein parts all because this has all new felt all new cotton I've only been using this for a month so it's like it's brand new still and uh, I was still switching back and forth between my 41 and this so it's not even really a full month use so all the cotton in here is good the felts in here is good the wick in here is good I'll put it in upside down burnt end in the piece <clears throat> but while we have the well, we have everything drained. You can probably see that. Like, I wonder why my camera's having such a hard time focusing now. It never, it never, never was an issue before. Huh. Never was an issue before. Now it won't focus. Weird. But anyways. So, this is all bunged up. And now, you don't want to use a hard metal polish. You want to use a soft a compound on here because as you see the letters are basically gone hold on yeah they're on this side the letters are basically gone that say the date on it they're here and here and it says Niagara Falls right there but since my camera is being a jerk today I will not focus on anything <laughs> awesome great news but unfortunately it's what I have so <clears throat> We'll start. So what I use is I use this Dremel. Okay. But you don't have to. You don't have to use a Dremel. You can do this by hand. You can use a bigger buffing machine. You can use whatever you want. And I'm going to use, uh, this is high gloss. But I but because of the state of this, I'm gonna use uh, soft metals because I got to do a little work still, and I don't want it to take off too much. And there is rust on here, so the rust will come off with the with the compounding. So, but another thing, what you'll do is you want to check is there. See, if you shine a flashlight on the wheel, you could see if there's a flint stuck in there. Because if there's a flint stuck in there, you wouldn't see any light. So, that's how you check to see if there's a flint stuck in there. There's no flint stuck in there. We're good to proceed. So now, I have my buffing wheel on. I got to put compound on it. And you just go slow. Just go slow. Rub it on. A little faster, I guess. Oh, that's not good. Okay. So now a little compound is on. I'll switch hands. And I'll just work those spots. All those spots with the rust get in there 
getting on the wheel. You want to make sure you're getting everywhere, right? And then the wheel will spin. The wheel, the wheel will spin while you're polishing it. If you go right on the side like that, and it'll spin it. And you can see, look, all the rust gone now. And you get in there deep. And if you put a little pressure, you might have to go a little harder on the power. But you don't want to go too fast either, right? Because you want it to rub and scrub because it's rusty. And you want to do every part. And you got to watch too because this does get hot. Now, I don't do the whole insert. I don't do the whole insert because I don't want to ruin the markings on the bottom here. See how they're already scratched off? If you buff it, you, you could rub the rest of the stamp off. You won't be able to identify it or know anything about it. So, I just leave it alone and I don't touch it. And you gotta hold on to your stuff tightly there. And just keep going, keep spinning her. Spin that flywheel, get her looking good. Get it right in there, don't be afraid. Get it right in there. This is what a buffing wheel is for. It'll bend and go to any nook and cranny you want it to. But you got to force it in to get those deep spots though that I'm not... You can see I'm missing. Yeah, I got it. And then same on this one. There. Okay. So now I'll just go around and do... <laughs> you got to watch it jumps on you. Go around, do nooks and crannies. I'll do the back here. Okay, all right. So we gave it a light buffing. And it is way cleaner looking now. But there's still a few spots I can do. And I will, but I also gotta wipe it. <clears throat> so, hold on here. I'm just going to use this fabric here. Give it a good wipe. See what I missed. Alright, hold on. Okay, I have to say. That looks really good. All the rust is off. Everything's all shined up. Everything is looking new and presentable. Because, like I said, it's going to be in the case. When you open it, you're only going to see this anyways. And these, this is an antique one, right? And I don't want to lose the writing on here. If this was a newer insert, an older, or just bad looking, I'd polish the whole thing or whatever. But I don't want to rub off because this uh, compound is, has an abrasive in it too. So it does take away a little bit while you do this. It looks like it doesn't, but it actually does. And uh, I don't want to lose any of the markings on here. So I'm not going to do any more of that. Okay, so now it's all polished, looking very clean. That'll look nice. So, then, now it's time. I'll move this away. I'm going to move a few things away here so I have some space. So now, I'm just going to take an insert. Now, if you don't have your own insert to do this with, you can just... You know, Zippo gives them away for free, man. Send your lighter and they'll send you a new insert. And then you take that insert. You take that insert. Okay, and put this up here. You take that insert and you use it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you take that insert. Okay, so I put it in the way it came out, right? You take that insert. Sorry, I'm trying to talk and do something at the same time. But you, you take that new insert Zippo gives you. Okay, so that's the bottom piece. And then the next piece. And the next piece. And the next piece. Okay, so there's my pieces. There's my new wick. As you can see, still brand new. Yeah, I used the end a little bit and I trimmed it one time. So it's still a full wick. It's ready to go so there's my wick 
And then this little piece in the back here. I guess this thing. And it's always a pain to get this one piece out here. Oh, sorry guys, hit my phone. Hmm. Hold on, I'm gonna do it off camera here. It's always easier. It's always easier. Okay, I'm gonna need something smaller. Do not worry. I have something smaller. Oof, man, this thing is packed again. Hold on one second. Okay, got it. All right, so, and that's the side piece, right? So you put that on the side. <clears throat> and now this is just another dead insert, but from my last video in my Frankenstein insert where I took two different inserts, one being a jet Japanese lighter and one being a Zippo lighter, so I call it Frankenstein because it's two different kinds, put them together to make one good insert. So now I have two inserts that I can send back to Zippo and they will give me all new cotton and wicks and things like that for that. So I don't have to worry about it. But I will put, look at, that's the Niagara Falls one from the nineties and that's the new one. I will put the old one back in. So I'll move that. So now I take my new insert, first thing I do is I feed the wick in. All right. So you just gotta get it in that hole. But this is also very hard to do. You really gotta, really gotta work this one in. Okay, I got it. It is through. So now we packed the same way in they had it. So they had the wick. They had the wick S start right away. They had the wick like this. So now that piece of cotton that was there goes there, right? Push it back down. Oops. So now you gotta push on that end. There we go. Oh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So now the next piece, and you could see where the wick was. So now the next piece, you bend the wick back. Cause like you want this to look like an S through the whole thing, right? So you bend the wick back, there it is. And this piece goes in like this. Done. Okay, now you could still see the groove actually where the wick was again. That's why it's nice just put in the same way they had it, right? So then back again, a little bend. And then there's this big stuffer there. All right? So we stuff him in. There, now it's pushed in good. And now a final bend. And the last piece for this roll here. Obviously there's the side piece I have to stuff in, but I will do that promptly after this one. Okay. Now don't worry about packing it in there. Remember, this was already in there. Zippo already had this packed in like this. Okay. Now this one, you just gotta pinch in the sides and stab it in. It'll go in. Don't be, oh sorry, sorry. I'm trying to look at it too. Don't be worried what it looks like when you're stuffing it in. As long as it goes in there and it's covering the, around the back of the pipe. That's all that matters. And you just keep stuffing it in. Because it was ripping when I put it off. As you can see, it was like two different pieces. And it, it won't. So you just wrap it back around the pipe and stuff it in. Not a big deal. And you just keep going and going until you get her back in. 
There we go. So there's half that piece. And then I will put half the last remaining piece in there. And like I said, you just kind of force in the corners, hold it. There we go. Okay, so now... The last thing to go in is your new felt. All right, it fits in there nice. Okay. So now we gotta put a flint in. Uh, I have a Flint right here. I don't want to put the old one back in because uh it was close to being needed to be changed anyways, so I'd rather put a brand new one in here. And you drop and you drop it in there. There, so now and then I put the old one back in. And listen to that tighten. Oh, look at that. It lit. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. No, I should have. I can't believe that lit. That's crazy. Okay, so you gotta tighten this. A one good tighten. There we go. Okay. Now we'll fill it. Oops. Sometimes it'll happen if you leave loose strings hanging out, you pull out a little cotton, it's stuck to the felt. See, not a big deal. You can just either rip it off or whatever. So now, fill it. I'm not going to put much fluid in here. Like I said, I just do about seven seconds. Let it dry for a snack. Okay, and I put too much. As you can see, it's all overflowing now. And my felt's soaked. And it's dripping all over my table. But with the fluid on the table, I will clean up the inside of my chimney. And I'll do the inside of the room. So what you do is you just give a little spray with some fluid. You take a Q-tip. Oops. Take a Q-tip and uh, clean away. It does a really good job. You can probably see it getting cleaner as they do this. It's called black. And that was all black inside, and you can see some brass now. So I soaked 
the chimney too. I will give it a good rubbing. And it has gotten better too. But I'm not too worried about cleaning the chimney because I'm going to be using this and it's just going to look like that in a few days. So who cares? I was just showing you guys. All right. So that's as much as I'm going to clean the inside of that lid because like I said, don't care. I'm going to be using this. And there we go. Okay, so on to the next problem. You're fixing up your old Zippo that you want to use and the hinge is loose also. So, let's see, has an overbite. Like that does look pretty good. Like look how nice that new, it looks like it's a new insert, but that's the old 90s Niagara Falls insert. Looks pretty cool. Let's see, I hate that little round small. The lid will lighten and the wick doesn't. I don't have that problem with Zippo fluid. It's a little more burning. Okay, so we know the hinge is also a little loose, right? It's loose and it has an overbite. So first things first, we gotta put all these back together. See how they're not lined up anymore? And how you do that is you just give them a good squeeze. You line them all up. This fits exactly inside there. You get them on the last set of teeth. Give them a good squeeze and that'll tighten them too. See, now they're lining up a little better. This corner one's out a little bit, so I'll apply more pressure in the corner. There we go. And one more time. There we go. Okay. Now the hinge loses moves a hell of a lot less now. Still an overbite though. So now we know when it has an overbite, we gotta go back with it. All right, so. There, I think that was it. I think that was it. Okay. So let's see if that was it. Nope, still got an overbite. Still more I could go. And, but it's not cockeyed, which is good. Which is good news. Okay, I'm gonna move that to somewhere else. I keep knocking it over. Okay, so we just gotta go back a little more. And a little more. Oh, see, when you pinch it, it comes off. You didn't move it back. Okay, let's see. Did not fix it. Okay guys, doing this on camera is so hard. I have to hold this up to my face and do it. I'm not trying to adjust it 40 times on camera just so you can see it. I, I have to do it close to my face, close to my chest. See if that fixes it. Almost there. Almost there. Still a little bit of an overbite. Because I'm I like I said, I'm trying to be gentle too, right? I'm not trying to I'm not trying to because you could you could easily rip this off the welds, right? If you're not holding this properly, you could easily rip this off the welds. And then you're sending it in to get fixed. Me, I'd probably just weld it back on myself, but you would be sending it in. But I probably want an insert, a free insert, so I would send it in, actually. Okay, let's see this one. Let's see if this one worked. Oh, finally. Okay. Okay, like I'm putting pressure on it to hit the lid like that, but look. Look, I have to stick my fingernail in there to get it. But it's flush. You can see, it is flush now. There. And the lid's not too bad now. It's nice and tight. It's way tighter than it was. You can do tricks. 
ready to go. And we're good. So guys, that's how you would take an old lighter that you wanted to use, completely fix the insert, restore it, fix the hinge, uh, repack it, everything you need to know on it. Uh, stay tuned for my next video. I have a very old Zippo that has a flint stuck in it and I'm gonna show you how to drill it out. So uh, that'll be in the next one. Everyone take care. Sorry about the length of this one, but that's what it takes to fix something on screen. So everyone have a good one.